Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 23. Let's look at verses 4 and 5 today. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey wandering away, you shall surely return it to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying helpless under its load, you shall refrain from leaving it to him. You shall surely release it with him. Now, this is a really interesting, uh, really glad to see this here. And I've learned something from it just by looking at this a little bit. Maybe you'll learn something right here too. Notice what it said at the beginning. If you meet your enemy's ox, your what? Your enemy's ox, but no, your, your what? Your enemy's ox. Okay, so this is an animal. It belongs to somebody who's not just your neighbor. He's not just your neighbor that's irritating to you. Uh, this is kind of going to the extreme case. You're meeting the ox there on the road, and it's the ox of your enemy. This is somebody who's actually just straight up against you. If you meet that and you come into this case, and it, that animal is, you see the donkey say, it's wandering away. Verse 4, what should you do? Say, oh, well, that guy's a bad guy. He's a problem. He's just a complete problem. I'm just going to let his donkey wander away. Uh, no, that's not the way you address it. You need to help him, even though he's described here as your enemy, you, you help him, you help him, but you don't let the animal wander away. For a while, we lived in uh, northeastern Washington, and we would have, sometimes the neighbor's cows would come over into our property. Now, our neighbors there were not our enemies, thankfully. Uh, but just the same, we would have to sometimes drop everything, stop what we were doing, and uh, help the animals, help them round up their cattle that came out into our 10 acres or so that we had there. There's a civil duty you have to be uh, working with the people around you. And even though that person, maybe that person is your enemy, but their animal's not your enemy, their animal's just the donkey's wandering loose, or sometimes the cattle would wander out into our spaces and into some of our stuff. So, you know, you didn't shoot the animal, you helped them so that the animal could be rounded up. Sometimes we had to round up cows. Now, did you notice what it had in the next verse? If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying helpless under its load, so it's been overloaded by your, you know, the one who hates you, it's been overloaded by him, and you look and say, oh no, there's the animal, it's laying on the ground, it's been overburdened, and it's it's fallen down, or it's just gone to sit down. What do you do? Well, <laughs> you don't you're supposed to get in and, and work with it. You can lighten the load, rearrange the load. Maybe you'll have to carry some of it over to your, your the one who hates you to his house. But you relieve the animal, and that's what's called for in God's order. That's the way you live. You treat the animals with kindness and generousness and respect, even if it's the animal of one who hates you. And so here we have this kind of counsel. What is this all saying to us? I'm going to come back to something that Stuart says in his commentary. Listen to this. By placing these sorts of laws in the midst of laws that concentrate on honest, godly behavior in cases of lawsuits, God, in effect, is saying to his people, in the midst of giving you laws about lawsuit behavior, I want to insert a reminder that I expect you truly to love your neighbor in every situation, no matter how selfish inclinations might cause you to feel. So I like what Stewart says there. He says that by putting these laws where he's God has put them, and here we are today working through, and here we have landed on it, this is the same as God tell, he's telling us in the same breath as he's giving us this law. In so many words, he's saying, hey, don't forget, my expectation for you is that you will love your neighbor. Your neighbor may hate you. He may be, regard himself as an enemy of you, verse 4, but you are to love your neighbor and you're to treat his property in a civil manner and even drop what you're doing to help his animals if his animals get off out and, and are, they're wandering down the street. Again, the, the, the Old Testament is, is harsh and God there is nasty and bad and throws thunderbolts. The New Testament, God is soft and warm and fuzzy. No, we find that's not true. Instead, we find that in the Torah, God is giving us here in the book of Exodus, he's giving us beautiful help for how to live his way. This is the kind of thing that Jesus would do. What would Jesus do if, if the high priest's uh, donkey got out into Jesus' garden? Well, Jesus would kindly take that 
donkey right over to the high priest, don't you think? Of course he would. So we want to be more like Jesus. And so that's our lesson for today. God bless you. And uh, hopefully you won't have to round up any cows. But, but if, if so, now you're ready. You know what to do. Help the person who hates you.